Good morning. My name is Jane, and I am with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. I am a longtime knitter, crocheter, and I do a lot of other crafts, sewing, quilting, I make handbags. Um, did I mention that I might have a little craft ADD? Yep, that's me. Um, I decided to start this podcast because I see a lot of knitting podcasts but when it comes to crochet we have fewer and fewer and I'd like to see more crochet podcasts so this will be mostly about crochet although there is going to be a lot of knitting included um, I'm gonna start first with some things that I've been working on and a lot of these things have been over the past year to be honest and they've been sitting in a pile waiting for me to do something with them. So I had decided that lately I need to just get in there, get after it, and start taking care of those issues. And either ripping or starting over and doing them, getting them done. So first thing we're going to start with is this lovely little blanket that I had started. Um knitting and this is a free pattern that we got that I got at Joanne's the pattern is basically called um I guess falling tools or something like that. I'll have to look and see what the exact name is it's a lullaby layette is what it is and it has a sweater that goes with it for babies um I'm not really enjoying this you have to really concentrate while you're doing it and you can see there's quite a few mistakes so I think what's going to happen is this is going to be one that's going to get ripped back to the very end and then we'll redo it and, and go on from there um, next I have a shawl that I had started and it's a very nice lovely shawl starts from the top down and you can see the lovely little lace pattern this is done in a purple um, I think I believe it's a Karen yarn um, no it's super saver it's done in dark orchid now to be honest, I have no clue where the pattern is. Don't know. Gone. I hope that I'm not the only one that does that, put things in project bags, and then separates the pattern. But apparently I am. So I'm having to decide what to do with this. Um, I'm currently looking through the patterns that are on my computer to see if I can actually locate the pattern, decipher it, that should be a real interesting task. So this one is a possible rip out unless I can find that pattern. Then we get to another lovely purple shawl and this one is a Karen yarn. It's a one pounder. Um, and I had basically just started it. It's just a garter, your basic top down um, pretty much the uh, dishcloth pattern. The only thing I do is I have marked a center line so that it kind of distincts, you know, gives it a distinction that there is a center that goes down so there is a nice spine. That's just something that I like to do and to me this is an easy car project that when we're on the road going up to our um, grocery stores or shopping that I can sit and just knit without even thinking about it. Um, we live in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania so we do a lot of our shopping in State College or Williamsport, um, Pennsylvania. So there is about 45 minute drive time either way to get back and forth 
So that's what we do a lot of. Um, I, I tend to knit crochet while I'm doing that. I apologize for the reaching. Um, I don't really have a desk set up for this kind of thing yet. I do plan on getting one a little bit later, but I just haven't gotten it done. This is a Tunisian crochet project that I have. And it is a pattern that is by, and I'm going to butcher her name, it's Aohibi. And it is the Midday. And it is the Honeymead. Um, I started this a couple of months ago. I work on it off and on because I get frustrated with it. Um, and the main reason that I get frustrated with it is because my count is not the count that she has listed. Um, and I, I have a little problem. I have emailed her several times through Ravelry, through several other groups about the count. And, you know, is it something I'm doing? Um, she has a lot of stitches that are built in one stitch so that you're doing several rows in the one stitch and you can see I've not blocked it because you know it's not finished and you can see that there's this nice little pucker that you get and for some reason I think it's probably me I'm just not doing something right but my bone that I have with this is because pattern designers, if you're going to sell on a platform, be readily available so that if someone has a question, that they can get some answers. I have posted questions everywhere but her Patreon, and I'm not one of her Patreon customers, so, you know, I don't know, I'm just going to keep carrying on and then I'll block it out and hopefully everything will come out. A lot of what I do is for charity. So I use acrylic yarns for everything because it's more economical. Um, part of the reason I named this Scraptastic Yarns is because I work with a prayer shawl group and we receive lots of balls of yarn, um, partially used skeins. We turn those into objects that can be used by people in and around our community. Every year we have something that we call a knit and run and the big uh, twin motorcycle club distributes everything that we have gathered throughout the year that has not been given out to others and they take that around the state and deliver them to nursing homes, personal care homes, um, hospitals, NICUs, just anywhere and everywhere they can where there is a need for them. These are things from hats, scarves, gloves, um, slippers, mittens, um, shawls, blankets, afghans, ponchos, baby sweaters, baby hats, you name it, we make it, we send it out around. That is just part of what our group likes to do. And it's a very non-denominational prayer shawl group. There are people from all walks of life that come and join in this. It's a great group of ladies and men and we just have a lot of fun every month when we meet to gather and we always show off our wares, you know, what we've made and stuff. So, um, those kind of things are the type of things that I like to make. I very rarely make anything for myself. Um, that is just not something that I particularly enjoy to do, is making things for myself. 
However, I do have a few projects that I'm making for myself. I'm going to give you an idea of some yarn acquisition. Um, our senior group, Senior Community Center, took a nice little trip. They provide a bus every month through federal grant, and we get to make these trips that we go around. And a lot of the trips we like to do for our group, our senior center, is we like to go shopping, eat out at different places, and see places around um, in Pennsylvania. One of the places we love to stop and shop at, of course, is Community Aid. If you've ever been to a Community Aid, you know that these thrift stores are very well organized and categorized. Um, one of the things that we always love to do is find gifts, find the little nod things. And of course, I don't, I'm like any other yarn person, I really don't need any more yarn. I'm actually probably one or two skeins away from being on a hoarding episode, but I grab it when I can because I know that I can take it up to the parachute group and it can be put to use. So Community Aid does a lot of things where they bag up things, either partial or full skeins of yarn. And this has probably got about seven or eight partial and one full skein of yarn in it of different various things so that's a that's going to be a little fun for us to manage and play with when we go into our shopping excursions and get into where are we going to put this is it going to be mittens is it going to be a shawl whatever now this is something that i purchased for myself because i do have um something that I want to make for myself. I do not have a hat. It's called here in Pennsylvania. So I need to make a hat for me. And I have a black coat with the hot pink inner lining that is a fleece. And I love that jacket. And I wear it most of the time, if not all of the time. Um, I tend to run a little hot, so I don't like a lot of bulky um, jackets on me in the winter. This is called Neon Fleck by Super Saver and I think it's what it's going to be a perfect choice of yarn for a hat for me. It's got a little flecks of some neon green and pink and yellow and you know some lime colors and I'm all about green. Everyone who knows me knows I'm all about green. So I plan on making a hat with that. I am also joining in Bob Wilson's 123 um, Cozy Card Along that she has just recently started. So I've gotten a several balls of the Super Saver um, Spearmint um, Ombre and I just love the way that this yarn um, just the color of it. It's just a beautiful color. And then I purchased an antique white to go around for the um, edging of the jacket when I get that done. Now I'm going to get into a few things that I have finished objects. I told you I had craft ADD and I seriously mean that. I have craft ADD. I like a lot of crafts. Um, one of the things that I love to do is to quilt. Um, with the hurricanes, there has been a need for pets to receive kennel quilts. So I make kennel quilts that will be sent to um, one of the rescue um, areas there are some designated places that have some things that they need and, and these are real easy. They're very simple. They're, they are a 12 by 18 inch square. You do very tight quilting on it. A stitch length of about 1.75, 1.8. Um, minimal stitching. There are no 
Um, there is no binding on it. It's you, you kind of use a pillowcase turn method for these. Um, cotton batting, all cotton. Um, the only thing is I do use the polyester thread um, simply because it's really hard to get just plain cotton thread where I live at. Um, we have a Walmart, like most places, and um, they don't always have cotton thread. It's usually polyester. Um, I do like to use ice cord polyester. It's a little stronger than Coates and Clark. Uh, has a little less fuzz. It's a little easier on my machine. You know what I mean? Because that's a lot of cleaning if you're using the regular polyester thread. Um, those will be sent out when, when I get a chance to get those out. This is a shawl. It is Seawords shawl by Premier Yarns. Um, this yarn was a mystery pack from either AC Moore or Joann's. Um, on it, it was listed an unknown fiber. I did a burn test. It, it appears to be acrylic. Um, I couldn't smell any human or any human, any animal fibers in it whatsoever. So I'm blocked. It has been blocked as a acrylic. I have a small lap can that I have done that is done in a ripple using some of the scraps that I've had. Um, that will most likely go to a nursing home. We have a lot of nursing home folks that enjoy the lap gans. Um, and that's a small enough size it can be used on someone that's in a wheelchair. Um, because you don't want the wheelchair to get caught in anything. This is a shawl that I have done in a pound of, um, Karen yarn. I believe it's called soft pink. Um, the edging I did did not have enough to finish the rose that I wanted to so I finished it in white. Um, it used the full pound of yarn of that. This is a pattern called Shells and Lace by Mama Stitchery Projects.com I believe. And I have used this pattern several times, and this pattern always comes out to be a very stunning shawl. Um, I have used it using multiple colors, scraps. Beautiful. It always comes out beautiful, and it's fast, it's easy. It's basically a four or five pattern row repeat. Um, so it's really quick and easy. One of the other finished items I have for this month is a granny square shawl. And this I just used about one and maybe a third of a sweet roll. Um, we do a lot of different shawls in different sizes. We don't always do them for just adults because many times when there is a funeral, We'll hand these out to the children of the family members as a comfort measure as well. Um, and this is just your basic granny square. It's just one that I do all the time from the top down. A lot of fun. Well, and then I got a little burnout on doing just shawls. So then I decided, well, I need to do something different. I have quite a bit of yarn that is bulky, the super bulky that I got for like a dollar fifty a skein when it was on sale. Um, this is, I believe, it's hometown USA Lion brand, and the um, want to say Fort Worth colorway. But this is basically just a cowl. Sorry for the 
lighting. I'm going to have to work on that. We, we live in a small apartment and there's no overhead lighting whatsoever. I have my lamp. We have the front door, but then when you open that up, you don't get any light because of the way that the apartment is situated. So I'm just going to have to play with that a little bit as we go along. But this is just a simple crocheted, half double crochet um, cowl. It can be doubled over. Then I made a longer cowl that can be twisted around several times. You know, it's going to be one of those lovely, easy things. It was basically, you know, just crocheting um, half double crochets in the back loop every row and then finishing it off. Um, then I did a knit a actually this one was knit this was not crochet this was knit. Um, so it was just knit every row. Garter stitch. My favorite stitch. I hate to purl. That's my problem. Um, I do do a lot of things where I purl, but I just don't enjoy it. Okay? I don't know what it is about the purl. I just don't care for it all that much. Then I knit this hat to go along with the set. So, um, and it's basically, it was just knit in a um, panel, and then you gather it up and then seam up the edges. That's it for what I have made so far. Um, there are some larger quilts that I cannot show you because they have already gone out to the community. Um, I work with a quilting group on Fridays and those go out pretty quick. Um, we have a lot of nursing homes that ask for them. We basically do a lap quilt size. We do some baby quilts. And for the most part, our quilts are a size 54 to 76, which means they can be used in hospitals and hospices because they don't drape way over on the edges. And we have outfitted several Alzheimer's units with those. Um, it's just something we like to do. You know, I'm retired. I'm busier than ever. Who knew? Right? Um, and then, of course, everybody volunteers you for everything. Some of the other things I like to do are plastic canvas, so you will see some of that. Um, I've recently started finding some new crafts. One of those is called Teneriff Lace, and I will be showing you some of that. Um, I like to do a lot of things. I sew, quilt, you name it. The only thing that I don't really like doing, to be real honest, is cleaning. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do when you got to do it. So, I try to make sure that I get a little time to do that. Um, and then I reward myself with a good long knit crochet session. So, um, I meet several times with a group of ladies. We do some crafts every time. One of the crafts that we're looking forward to coming up is we're going to make some dream catchers. Um, this is just something that we've had on our mind we wanted to do. So, we are going to do that. Every year, the Senior Center in Lycoming and Clinton County hands out senior boxes to those people who receive Meals on Wheels. And every year we are part of a group that crafts to make something for them so that when they get that Christmas box, they also receive a small gift, whether it be dishcloths, hats, scarves, something to let them know that someone cares about them. I have done some Meals on Wheels in the past. Um, I enjoyed that. I don't know that I will be doing it again in the near future, 
but for those of you that are looking for something to do sincerely consider becoming a Meals on Wheels volunteer it is very rewarding um, it is a lot of fun the people you meet are are some of the best people in the world um, we too many times do not have people these days who are good human beings and these people are actually very good human beings with that I'm gonna close I hope to get things situated a little better to where things are a little better lighting a little easier to see I am filming this with my home computer I am going to tell you I do have some issues with focal cord um, I had um, a discectomy done back in 2009 and as a result um, I have one paralyzed vocal cord now I used to have a very deep sexy voice okay I'm kidding I don't know that it was deep and sexy but it wasn't as raspy or as soft and airy as it is now there are times that when I will say something nothing comes out even though my mouth is moving um, that has to do with vocal cord issues and it has to do with the amount of humidity that's in the air the coldness and sometimes it has to do with how much I have used my voice during the day um, that is why I have issues with modulating my voice many times um, you may see that when I'm talking I get this funny little warble in my voice that's because of the vocal cord issue I do get a little shorter shortness of breath faster easier because of it again vocal cord issues um, other than that I will say good day to you and I hope you have a very happy and wonderful prosperous day and by all means go out and make something and make someone have a happy day thank you